Hey guys, I'm back, and this time I have the GG Maker Magic 3D printer. This is aimed at beginners. It's less than $200, and well, basically I've seen other reviews on YouTube about this particular 3D printer where they put it together, they do a couple prints and give you their thoughts on it. Well, that's all fine and good, but I wanted to know more about how well does it really print outside of trying a couple prints. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cover the build, a couple of the gotchas I found along the way, what I did as far as calibrations, a few small improvements, and as you can see on the desk here, there's all kinds of prints I can't wait to show. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, first of all, my name is Paul. And this is my channel where nerdy is cool. I love talking about 3D printers, doing reviews, upgrades, filament reviews. I'm big into cosplay. I got a Stormtrooper suit. I've got a full size R2D2. I got a Batman suit and the list goes on and on and on. If you're not already a subscriber, I invite you to hit the button down below and become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. 97% of you guys are not subscribers. Get on that. I'd also appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section down below. So that said, let's get some background here. So this is a JG Maker Magic 3D printer. This was sent to me for free. They contacted me and said, hey, we would like to send you a JG Maker Magic uh, 3D printer and uh, do a uh, YouTube review on that. Would you be willing? And I said, sure, why not? So several weeks later, it arrived and voila, I've had it for about two and a half, three months now. I wanted to do a lot of printing on this just to kind of get a newbie's version of how well this printer works. As I mentioned, I've seen some really good videos by respected YouTubers that have put it together, done a few prints, and then given their thoughts. And I wanted to do something a little deeper than that. Now, if you're looking for a detailed video on how it's all put together and the build and such like that, I would love to refer you to my friend Brian Vines. Uh, BV3D is his channel name, with his name, Brian Vines and he did a super well detailed video on the whole steps of putting this together. So part of the process of putting this together is you're putting these extrusions and you're bolting them into the side uh, and then you have to get this gantry installed and there's only one uh, lead screw on the back here which kind of reminds me of the original CR10. Uh, it doesn't have a second lead screw in the back. Now when putting this together one thing that came in really handy was the old carpenter's triangle, just to make sure everything was square, because I had a great deal of difficulty getting this guy to go down and line up properly. I got some video here I can show you. Uh, one of the issues I ran into is as I put this together and I thought I had everything nice and lined up and, and, and working, uh, I noticed that my X gantry across here was crooked. I could not, <laughs> I kept looking at it going, what have I done wrong? Everything is square. I've done everything as they've said. I, I, I even I, This printer does have eccentric nuts, so you can make adjustments uh, to tighten or loosen the grip of the wheels against the extrusion. Arion, you should really take note of that. You're the only people I know that sell printers that don't have eccentric nuts. Anyway, that's a rant for another day. So what I discovered was that when I was looking at how, uh, especially through here, and I'll give a zoom in here, and also some uh, video, uh, it was crooked the way that they had affixed the bracket to the 2020 extrusion. And fortunately, I was able to correct that, uh, get that straightened, and then the gantry went on, and then when it came to leveling the bed, I, <laughs> it was much happier. I mean, I was way off on the bed leveling. So that was one of the early snafus I ran into, and fortunately, it was a fairly simple fix once I determined what I had to do. So once I had the construction woes out of the way and had a level gantry, the, <laughs> the first thing I learned I hated, 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 was this build surface. And first of all, you know, I know other YouTubers have mentioned that, you know, it's like a magnetic, there's nothing magnetic here. It's, it's a piece of, plastic or something with this build tack like surface. And I just kept on digging into it and getting prints off of it was terrible. I was scraping and scraping and scraping just to get the test prints off. 
and I just said, that's it, I've had it. So I made the $58 investment. Um, the replacement bed for this, if you decide to go the path I went, uh, I went with Wham Bam Bed Systems. Uh, it costs uh, $58, it's the 235 by 235 uh, kit. So it has the pre-applied uh, surface of PEX on top of the spring steel and then the magnet and that made life so much easier for printing. Uh, I, it wasn't terrible to get this thing leveled and I used a feeler gauge. I'm not a big fan of using the piece of paper. I use a feeler gauge uh, because obviously paper has give, whereas a feeler gauge, you're either, you're either on it or off of it. So I like using the feeler gauge now. And I'll give you some close-ups here of some of the first prints, which is done here in the white filaments that I happen to have kicking around. Uh, it was ColorFab uh, PLA PHA. And this is the print that comes uh, on the uh, SD card. And it definitely had some extrusion issues and some other weirdness going on, uh, as you'll see in the photo. So I think, as I think other YouTubers had mentioned that if I was a newbie, had put this together and that was my first print and that was my first result, I'd be pretty disappointed. So on top of here, I have all kinds of other prints I've done. The ones with the numbers here, uh, these are the extrusion multipliers I've done. Uh, back on the table here, I have also done a temperature tower. Uh, but let's start with the things that I did first. So. After seeing that test print, it was obvious to me that the E steps were off, which is the amount of steps that the extruder takes to push filament through. So there's a wonderful link I'll give you down below. It's Matt's blog where it tells you step by step how to do the E steps on the extruder, exactly, you know, uh, uh, all the command codes you need to do in the console window. It's like I said, I'll provide a link down below. It's on my bookmark list. I use it all the time. And I found that once I had made the adjustments, my E-steps were way different uh, than the stock settings. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll let you know in the uh, description, uh, ultimately what my E-steps wound up being. So once we had the E-steps figured out, we did a temperature tower to find out the sweet spot on the uh, filament. And as I usually do with ColorFab PLA, it happened to be 200. So that was a good temperature to start with, but before I got too carried away doing any more prints after that, I thought, well, if the E steps were off, what else could be off? So I did a PID auto tune on the hot end and I came up with much different results than the stock settings had. And again, I'll provide you a link down below to tell you how to do a PID auto tune on the hot end. And after that, <laughs> we started doing extrusion multiplier. So what we were trying to do um, using the steps in the Matt's blog, and you can also use Teaching Tech. Uh, he has some great examples as well of the settings you use in your slicer so you can fine tune and determine your flow. So I did a bunch of these and as you can see, as uh, we started out, they looked a little rough, but as we got the correct settings, it started to print really, really nicely. So as I mentioned, as I clear, clear the build plate and everything, I was really a big fan of the Wham Bam. Uh, like I said, this was a $58 investment. Usually I don't upgrade printers as I review them, but that stock surface was driving me crazy. Uh, I went with some Matte Forge Blue and these guys came out pretty nice. Uh, as I moved into some nicer filaments, I got some better results. This temperature tower was a little rough, but we got by. Uh, then I moved on to using, this is the Ziltec. This is their gold silk. And I'll show you some of these close-ups here. Uh, I did some of my favorites. I did, of course, the extrusion multiplier. We got a really great cube. Um, and then we got, and this is very interesting, is this is the 3D printer test. It displays a lot of the overhangs. And you'll notice that uh, because of that fan, whether it's a weak fan or just a duct position, uh, I really had difficulties with overhangs greater than 40 degrees. Uh, and you know, although it was a little iffy on this one, but yeah, 40 degrees is about it. So also I went ahead and did some fun prints. I did the lucky cat. I did the kitten one, which I really like. Again, a lot of vertical banding showing up. Uh, and then we did Wonder Woman and a beautiful, beautiful print. But again, I, I just can't seem to get rid of that vertical banding. So I don't think it's anything to do with the Z uh, lead screw. Uh, the, the coupler is on there well. I don't see any separation like sometimes cheap couplers will have. 
uh, it goes up and down uh, rather smoothly. The only thing I can think of is something going on with the extruder or the way it extrudes, but uh, that's the only thing I really couldn't solve with this thing. Other than that, I mean, making some of those calibrations, tunes, and tweaks is printed quite well. So one of the things, before I get into the electronics like some other people have gone way big into, is this is not a completely quiet printer. I get some video here of it printing, and uh, I mean, the fans are loud, and it's not using, we're seeing a lot of machines that use 2208 or 2209 stepper drivers. <laughs> this is not that. Uh, matter of fact, I have it here on the page. I wanna say it's using the HR, uh, 4982s. And the other thing that's unusual about this machine is that there is, a, I mean, let's tip everything back here, there's, there's no cover. <laughs> so I don't know if a cover would help with that noise at all, but uh, I mean, if you want to get in there and look and see what's going on, yeah, that's, that's great. But I mean, I think most people would agree that having the, a cover on the bottom would, would be quite good. <laughs> so I just thought that was an unusual design choice on their part. So for a slicer, I just use Cura. Cura happened to have a JG Aurora, JG Maker Magic profile for this, and it seemed to work really well. Uh, I haven't seen anything in here that relates to the Z-banding issue I'm having some troubles with, but if someone else finds it or <laughs> identifies something stupid, let me know in the comment section down below. But I mean, everything I did, I mean, printed quite well. Um, you know, of course, Cura likes to do their combing thing, so the bottom wires have some interesting zigzags going, but. Uh, overall, all the prints came out quite nice. Okay, so the big question, would I recommend this printer to a complete newbie who's just getting into 3D printing? Well, I'm gonna answer that, but I'm gonna add an asterisk, okay? So I'm gonna say no. However, if said person who loves the idea of getting a bargain, <laughs> getting this for less than $200, if that person is a tinkerer and knows that they're getting a machine that's gonna require some tuning and calibration, you know, doing your PID auto-tune, how to figure out your extrusion multiplier, you know, you may or may not have some issues on assembly, it's gonna be perfect for someone like that. If it's someone who's completely green at 3D printing, I don't think it'd be the best choice. However, I will preface that by saying that if you already have a 3D printer and you're looking for a second one, and you've kind of been there and done that, I know what it takes to get a 3D printer working, this wouldn't be a bad deal for less than $200. Okay, so what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Just wanted to let you know, you can also find me on the various social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and of course the webpage is wherenerdyiscool.com. Okay, so that's it for this time. I just wanted to let you know that JG Maker contacted me a little while ago offering $10 off if you buy from their website. So I will leave that coupon code down below in the description. And I'll also leave you links elsewhere for, as I mentioned, you can get this on Amazon. I'll give you information on some of the things I did to tune and get this guy working fairly well. Uh, for example, the extrusion multiplier and e-steps and all that good stuff. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Every time I move this chair squeaks. Time for your chair. Five. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, this is, this is, uh, and we're off to a good start. All right, they've been quiet all night. I turned the cameras on and it's a freaking cat zoo upstairs.